Jeffrey Hinton, the sometimes called godfather of artificial intelligence, is trying to explain its risks to the world. This is just something somebody sent me from Twitter. Which means explaining something very real that can sound entirely made up. I'm lost, I don't know. He's eager for good communication of the urgency, and look who might be offering it, Snoop Dogg. It's, it's blowing my mind because I watched movies on this as a kid. And I heard the dude, that, the old dude that created AI, talking about, this is not safe because the AI's got their own minds <laughs> and these motherfuckers going to start doing their own shit. I'm like, is we in a fucking movie right now or what? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, man? Do y'all know? <laughs> That's what people are saying. He's like, are we in trouble? He gets it. He's smart. <laughs> You're not offended he called you the old dude? No, I call myself the old dude now. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine working your entire adult life to build a better future. I think we're going to see the learning methods we've got already have dramatic effect on many industries and solve lots of problems. Where computers and machine learning make life better for humans. These chatbots answer complicated questions, draft emails and speeches, then realizing that the creation is nearing a point where it could do a type of harm that cannot be undone. That's the realization that hit Hinton when he was working for Google. Because of his job, he couldn't talk, so he quit his job, and now he talks. I caught up with him in London a few days ago. I think people are alternately excited to hear from you and a bit afraid. Should they be? I think there are things to be worried about. There's all the normal things that everybody knows about, but there's another threat that's rather different from those, which is if we produce things that are more intelligent than us, how do we know we can keep control? And what tends to happen when... Well, if we're talking about evolution, all these species are evolving, and what tends to happen is it doesn't go well for the less intelligent species. The other one kills it? Not necessarily. Ants look after aphids because they produce honey. Um, but... Ants are in charge. Ants are in charge, yes. Ants, in this analogy, in case that wasn't ominously clear enough, are not the humans. It made me realize that these digital intelligences have something we don't have that makes them much better. When one of them knows something, it can tell all the others that's what we don't have with people. So imagine you had 10,000 people, and imagine if when one person learned something, everybody knew it. You could learn a lot more stuff, right? right. And that's why things like ChatGPT knows like 10,000 times as much as any one person. It's because when you train it, there's lots of different copies looking at different bits of the data and learning stuff, and they can all combine what they learn instantly with a bandwidth of like trillions of bits. So can they think? Yes. So imagine the following scenario. I'm talking to Chatbot, and we talk for a bit, and the answers it's given me seem a bit strange to me. And I suddenly realize that it thinks I'm a teenage girl. And I say, what demographic do you think I am? And it says it thinks I'm a teenage girl. Um, so the question is, when I said it's, I suddenly realize it thinks I'm a teenage girl, was that a metaphorical use of the word think? Or was that just the same way as we use think? And I strongly believe that use of the word think, when I said it thinks I'm a teenage girl, was exactly the same way of using think as we do with people. And so that was enough to make you say, what, this has accelerated beyond my comfort level? I suddenly realized maybe they already are better, and making them more like real neural nets isn't the point. They're already better than us. They're a better way of doing learning. And if we make them bigger, they'll get much smarter than us. They already know more than any one person. I, I understand that things could go awry, but I still think that people hear the notion of danger and they dismiss it as hyperbole. I thought it was hyperbole for a long time because I thought these things were a long way off. I thought there will eventually be danger, but I thought um, focusing on it now is unnecessary because it'll be 30 to 50 years before these things get more intelligent than us. But this combination of realizing that they might have a much better way of learning than we have, because they can share knowledge instantly. And seeing things like ChatGPT or Palm at Google that can explain why a joke is funny made me realize these things are already pretty intelligent. And if they've got a better form of intelligence than ours, then it gets to be much more urgent. 
probably still hard to see the threat, right? Some changes are clear. As ChatGPT, for example, gets smarter, as AI gets more advanced, yeah, some jobs will disappear and some may shift. There can be pluses. For example, an AI doctor may have data from hundreds of millions of patients, so far more knowledge than an actual human. But what if that machine, that AI doctor, stops recommending treatment for people with a low chance of recovering? That can happen with humans too, but as machines learn and supersede human learning, it is the unintended consequences that haunt. Can we give these machines a, a moral code, a, a, a code of ethics? You can't um, kill people, you can't hurt people. It would be nice if we could do that, but just remember that one of the main players in developing these machines is defense departments. Mm. And defense departments, I mean, Isaac Asimov said, if you make a smart robot, the first rule should be, do not harm people. Well, I don't think that's going to be the first rule in a robot soldier produced by a defense department. Right. But is there not some language we can give them so that they can police themselves? How does it work out when things police themselves? Yeah, not well. Where's your mind going in this conversation? Is it going to that terrible place of past creations that threatened humanity? The nuclear bomb, for example. It's not a bad example because it's so terrified that fear motivated a type of global togetherness, treaties that have kept the threat at bay until now. This, says Hinton, is that. Was this not where we say, China, Russia, we, we can't stand each other. They, they, all these countries, they're, they're angry, but we, we have a, a common concern. Exactly. For the superintelligence is taking over, not for all the other things, but for that, we're all in the same boat. It's like a global nuclear war. We all lose. And so that's the situation in which warring tribes cooperate. An external enemy that's bigger than them will force them to cooperate because they get the same payoff as each other. And so this threat is like that. Do you think China understands that? Yes. What, what makes you think that? There's researchers in China who are talking about this. Do the Americans understand it? They're beginning to, I think, yes. Senior political leaders in the States are paying attention now, and they're getting very interested in... So it's not just things like fakes and job losses, which are the sort of immediate concerns. They're also becoming interested in this existential threat of how do we stop these things taking over? The White House is indeed talking about a moral obligation for tech companies to consider the risks of AI, not just the benefits. Where the planet agrees on so little, just maybe it can agree on this.